I feel like I've been hearing a lot about treasuries recently, but I kind of thought that that was just kind of something my grandparents invested in. So what are treasuries exactly, Nathaniel? Um, so treasuries fall into basically three main categories. There's bills, notes, and bonds. So the treasuries are not made for everybody. It just depends on what you want to do with the money. So today's applications can make sense for uh, a fixed income portion of your portfolio if you want to go that route. Uh, but there are some factors that you have to be aware of. In this Welcome to Critical Thinking Required, hosted by LBW. This podcast is intended for free thinkers, entrepreneurs, and knowledge seekers. Join us as we discuss relevant financial topics, explore with guests their financial journeys, and engage with experts in industries such as space, media and entertainment, real estate, and many more. Buckle up and enjoy the ride. Welcome to Critical Thinking Required. I'm your host today, Kennedy, and here is Nathaniel. You may recognize him. Uh, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about treasury bills. Um, before we do that, you can find us anywhere there's anything recorded. YouTube, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Come listen. Come watch. Um, but we're going to get right into it. Um, I feel like I've been hearing a lot about treasuries recently, but I kind of thought that that was just kind of something my grandparents invested in. So what are treasuries exactly, Nathaniel? Um, so treasuries fall into basically three main categories. There's bills, notes, and bonds. So those principally uh, factor into how long the terms of each of those are. So bills have four, eight, 13, and 26 week terms on them. Notes are two, three, five, seven, and 10 years. And then you have bonds, which are 20 and 30 years. And just to give you a brief history of how these rates have traversed over the past 40 to 50 years, as I'm sure most of our listeners are aware, uh, there was the period of great inflation in the 70s and 80s. And as a result of the Fed chairman at the time, Paul Volcker, uh, he was able to crush the back of inflation and bring inflation down by raising interest rates at the Federal Reserve. And as a result, interest rates have been decreasing ever since, until very recently. Uh, they, they did have a period in the, in the mid-aughts where they, they went up, but then they came quickly back down during the great financial crisis. Okay, um, interesting. And so that just, so interest rates going down, boo, interest rates up, yay, right? Well... Kind of. Kind of? Kind of. It, it can depend. Uh, so it kind of goes into the applications of treasuries that you can do with today. Like um, they used to be your grandparents' investments, as you said, so to speak. But they can be useful in, in portfolios today, no matter what your age. But it, it's all dependent on what you're using, what your intent for that investment is. So that's to say that not all tre uh, treasuries are not made for everybody. It just depends on what you want to do with the money. So today's applications can make sense for uh, a fixed income portion of your portfolio if you want to go that route. Uh, but there are some factors that you have to be aware of in the sense that, for example, to your point about rising interest rates, yay, it, it can be. But for example, one of the risks are duration risk. Okay. So um, duration risk pertains to interest rates going up and down. Mm -hmm. And then the longevity or the term of your, your fixed income, your bond instrument, in this case, treasuries. So let's say that you have a 30-year a bond. You own that today. And then interest rates were to go up. If you have a long duration investment and interest rates go up, then that means that your investment today is not as valuable as it is, as it is tomorrow. Because if interest rates are going up on treasuries, then that means on then that means that um, that investment that that one percent greater investment is more valuable than your bond that you hold at one percent less. Hence, the value of your bond will go down as interest rates rise. Okay. And then the converse, the inverse, excuse me, happens when interest rates go down. So that's what happened when the, the into the 80s, as the interest rates declined, then the values of the bonds went up because 
as the interest rates decreased and then those future bonds became less, they were less valuable than the bonds that were issued at higher interest rates. Okay. So that's just one example of a risk when it comes to, well, not only uh, treasuries, but any investment, which include, uh, as I said, duration, opportunity cost. That means you have a 4% treasury here versus say an investment in a stock. Mm -hmm. Well, then you have to consider like how long is your investment time frame? Like we always like to harp on, which is the more valuable to you. If you have a shorter time frame, then perhaps the treasury is a better deal for you versus a long-term investment in a stock, for example, because the stock is typically more risky because it's lower down on the cap on a company's capital structure versus a treasury, which is a form of debt, and debt is higher up on the, the capital hierarchy. Other risks include credit risk. So when it comes to U.S. treasuries, for example, the U.S. has never defaulted on its debt. Exactly. <laughs> we have to remember, though, the U.S. is a very young country. A lot of people forget that, that in comparison to, say, for example, China, China's been around for thousands of years. It hasn't been in the exact same uh, government structure that it is today. It wasn't always like that, obviously. Sure. But the, the country as it exists today is largely the same as, well, some would argue, <laughs> us historians who go back and forth. But uh, I digress. Uh, they've been around for thousands of years, and they had some defaults in there and such. The U.S. hasn't, but we've only been around for 200 plus years. We got a long ways to go in, compar in comparison. So that's not to say that we're going to default on our debt tomorrow. I'm not saying that. <laughs> that would be a lot I'm of I'm nervous. <laughs> but it could happen. You just, you, you can't always assume that because it's it hasn't defaulted today, that it's not going to default tomorrow. Always have to look at history. And you can't just look in the past 40 to 50 years back to say what happened during the 70s and 80s when the inflation was high and interest rates were increasing. and break Got to go back longer. Another risk, liquidity risk. So mm -hmm. generally when a client asks us, well, why aren't you investing in treasuries? Well, then we come back and say, well, how soon do you want that money? Well, I, I might want it in a year or two to buy a house. Okay, well, then you should buy a treasury that's one to two years in duration. You shouldn't go longer than that, even if it has a higher interest rate, because you need that money within a shorter time frame. Because the risk is, as I mentioned previously, with interest rates go up, then the value of your bond or uh, bill or note, whichever, will go down. So if you want to sell before it matures, then you're not going to probably get all of your original investment back. Bummer. I know. And then just when it comes to inflation and deflation. So in an inflationary environment, holding cash, you it loses value versus having it invested. But then the question becomes, what are you going to have it invested in to beat inflation? What one investment makes the most sense? Do treasuries necessarily make sense? If treasury is running at an eight to 9% annualized rate, then a treasury that's selling at two to three or maybe 4% maybe still might not make sense. Right. But is it if in a very uh, low risk to no risk investment as treasuries are considered, perhaps that is a decent investment, but it always depends on your particular situation. It's a good point. I guess I'd always considered that treasury bills and, and bonds and notes were always just less risky in general, but I guess I need to think about what kind of risk I'm talking about when I think about that, don't I? Okay, well, thank you for that. Um, do you have any maybe last thoughts or any notes to share? Any tidbits? Yeah. If you will. Sure. So I, I we always like to say what may make sense for one person may not necessarily make sense for another. Everybody is unique. God, I say that a lot. But everybody is unique. We're special, all of us. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> we're all different. <laughs> we're all different. We're all unique. We all have different needs, customized, unique to us. So what may make sense for me may not make sense for Kennedy and vice versa. So whenever you're making an investment, you should always consider that fact. You shouldn't try and fit a square peg in a round hole. Another metaphor for the same concept. It's a really good one. Uh, you don't want to sell in and out of really any investment, but 
when it comes to treasuries, same thing applies. You don't want to sell out. Uh, you don't want to buy something uh, that has a duration of five years that you know you're going to need in two years. It just doesn't make sense. And then that also flows right into your liquidity. Uh, even if you're playing the game where you're rolling over um, 13 week treasury bills, let's say you buy a treasury bill for 13 weeks, 13 weeks, you get your money back. If you need it before then, then don't invest in a 13 week, invest in a four week or an eight week treasury bill, depending upon your needs. Great thoughts. Pick the peg that suits you. Amen. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for sharing, Nathaniel. I think I know a little bit more about treasury notes, bonds, and bills than I did before this podcast. So thank you for sharing your thoughts. And thank you for all of, thank all of you for listening. Um, again, friendly reminder, follow us on YouTube, like on Spotify, blah, blah, blah. Um, see you next time. Like, like and subscribe. Thank you for taking the time to start your journey of thinking differently and listening to LBW talk about stuff they love. Until next time.